What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel for another Escape from Tarkov Task video. And today we're going to be talking about Ragman Tasks 18 through 21, which is Minibus, Living High is Not a Crime, The Blood of War Version 2, and Hot Delivery. I'll also include links in the description box below that will take you to the other Ragman Tasks if you haven't already completed them. The first task today is called Minibus, where you need to go on interchange and find three yellow minibuses and plant markers on them. You can buy the markers directly from Prapor, just like you have in the past. Now the location of the first minibus can be found if you go to the northeastern side of the map, just near the entrance of Ollie. There you'll see a construction site. Go inside the construction site and hidden in one of the back corners is your first yellow minibus. Now head to the front of the interchange just under the ultra sign. On the right hand side of that entrance, you'll notice that there's a parking garage. Go inside the parking garage and continue moving back until you see a yellow minibus on your front left. After you've planted your marker, start heading directly southeast. You'll see that the parking garage has been collapsed. Continue moving past that. Eventually, you'll see that there's a parking area that's kind of off on its own directly towards the southeast exfil underground. Move there and you'll see the yellow minivan off on its own. Plant your marker, extract and leave the raid. The next task is called Living High is Not a Crime, where you need to collect four bronze lions, four horse figurines, four cat figurines, and one roller. First, let's start talking about how to get your cats, horses, and lions. All three of these items can spawn in the treasure rooms on Shoreline. I'll include a link in the description box below to my gold chain and Bitcoin farming. All those locations can also spawn any of these figurines. Any safe on any map can also spawn these items, including the roller. I'll also include a link that shows all of the safe locations on customs. The estates on Shoreline are also really good for these items. but. Out of all the locations that you can potentially find these, the best and most consistent spot has to be Idea in the interchange. Idea is so good for these items that it's honestly probably not even worth your time going to any other location, including the safes, unless you're experiencing high levels of competition because of the new documents holder trade. Now the route that I take starts off on the left hand side of the door just past the offices. You want to go to any of the outlets that have the entertainment systems and the shelving. The vast majority of these shelving and entertainment systems are actually in the middle of the store. So I would recommend watching this video and following my path. It is definitely the most efficient way of finding every single piece of display shelving that possibly has these spawns. There's also two spawn locations that are on the far side, the far south side of the store that are towards the storage area. So you don't want to forget about those either. In this one example run that you just seen on screen, I was able to get four cats, one lion and one horse figurine. That's just under three minutes of work. So as you can see, it's probably not even worth going for safes or going to shoreline. This is the best way. Now for the roller, there's a number of options here, but probably the most consistent way you're going to be able to find it is by looting safes. However, there is a task that you can complete in the game that rewards you with a roller, and that is the chumming task from Skier, which is one of the new point nine tasks. A link to that will be included in the description box below. It does require you to find five gold chains in order to complete the task. Once you've found all your figurines and your roller, turn them in to finish up the quest. Now it's time to talk about the Blood of War Part 2. I think it goes without saying that you need to complete Part 1 before being able to accept this task. But you need to find six fuel conditioner cans. So this quest is one of the reasons why it's taken me so long to actually release this video. Finding these conditioner cans was a little bit tough at first because if you just go and search duffel bags, toolboxes, the third story of the factory, dead scavengers, or killing scavengers, it is technically possible for you to find all of your fuel conditioner cans on those locations. However, as I suspected and many others, you are actually able to find static spawn locations on interchange and even on shoreline for these fuel conditioner cans. Now I've spent a lot of time attempting to find conditioner cans where other players have found them to no avail, but I will be able to tell you guys the locations that worked for me and members of my community. By far the most consistent way to find fuel conditioner cans in the location where I found three out of my six was in Techlight. 
there's a generator that is sitting next to one of the shelves. In between the generator and the shelf spawns a fuel conditioner can. The next location to find a fuel conditioner can on interchange is inside the power station. There's a generator in the middle of the floor. Just behind that, between the generator and the shelf, spawns a can. In fact, I just found one while recording this video. Another location worth checking is the front of the Goshen supermarket. You'll see a power generator that is actually live. Next to that generator apparently spawns a conditioner can. At the back of Goshen, on the oil barrels, apparently spawns fuel conditioner cans, but I've not been able to see them. On the Scav Island on Shoreline, next to the motor with the key 328, sometimes can spawn a fuel conditioner can. And I've also heard a rumor that inside the Shoreline bus depot can sometimes spawn a fuel conditioner can. Now, one of my fuel conditioner cans I found on the rare loot spawn location in the hallway in the factory offices, but that shares a spawn chance with like rollers, gunpowder, AS valves. It's just some one of these random rare loot spawn locations that can really spawn almost anything. The locations that I just mentioned specifically spawn those cans. It's really hard to pinpoint all of the locations where this fuel conditioner can spawns because it's such a rare item and all the static spawns that it has, no other item will spawn there. So they're very specific spawn points. So you could technically play Interchange and not see a conditioner can in one of these suggested locations ever in your Tarkov career, or you can get lucky and find one at every single one of them. I'm gonna let you guys include some locations in the comment section below, but by far the most consistent way is definitely Tech Light. Trust me, it's probably worth your time just farming Tech Light for all six cans or Tech Light and the power station of your choice. As well as if you're really struggling, you can just loot duffel bags on Shoreline, but you're just rolling the dice on every single duffel bag open. I do think it's probably faster if you go to some of these static locations. After you've gathered up all your fuel conditioner cans, turn them in to complete the task. The last task we're going to be talking about in today's video is called Hot Delivery, which is unlocked after you complete the task Gratitude. Now this requires you to leave two pairs of contacts, two 6B47 helmets, and two pairs of Gazelle K armor on the interchange. At this point you should already have Ragman level 2 because you wouldn't even be able to accept this task if you didn't. So at Ragman level 2 you can buy the 6B47 helmet and the contacts required to place for this task. The most difficult part of this task is actually getting your hands on two sets of Gazelle K armor because you're unable to purchase it until you're done of all of the Ragman missions. So there's a few ways that you can get your hands on some Gazelle K armor. The first way is getting lucky and killing scavengers and hoping that they wear it. I find the scavs at the end of Road to Customs sometimes have it. You can try your luck and purchase them from Fence. People now sell extremely low durability armor to Fence for some reason, and you'd be surprised how many Gazelle K armors actually popped up. I am just not fast enough to buy them, but here's an example of me attempting to buy them in a short period of time. But, as always, I like to give you guys a consistent method of farming. So there is a static spawn location in the generic store on Interchange on one of the mannequins. And the spawn chance is actually relatively high. I got two gazelles back to back for this quest. In fact, it's one of those situations where it's probably just worth your time to go to generic over and over and over again until the gazelles spawn, rather than attempting to kill scavengers and going for that RNG. Once you have your two gazelles, two contacts, and two 6B47s, now it's time to go to interchange to plant them. You want to go to the avocado store, which is actually directly across from generic. Along the walls in one of the stores, you're going to see a pile of cardboard boxes and garbage. That's where you're going to want to place the helmets and the contacts. Keep in mind, you need to place both sets of contacts before you're allowed to place both sets of helmets. Now for the next mission, I do recommend that you do this in two separate raids, just because of how difficult it is to get your hands on the gazelle armor. If you have a gamma container, you can just put the armor inside. If you don't, then this is going to be a little bit more challenging for you. First, head directly in front of the interchange in front of the ultra sign. Inside the parking lot, you'll notice a band stage. To the right of the stage, there's going to be a pile of boxes. That's where you need to plant your gazelles. Once you've planted the helmets, the contacts, and the gazelles, congratulations, you're done with the tasks. 
Thank you so much for watching today's task video. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more Escape from Tarkov content and gameplay, as well as sharing these videos around with your friends who might be struggling completing these tasks. I also want to give a shout out to my man Pestily. He's got guides on his channel as well, and he actually was in my Twitch chat hanging out during the minibus quest. And lastly, be sure to check out my daily live streams every single morning starting at 8.30am Eastern Standard Time and Sundays at noon at twitch.tv slash deadlyslob.